Welcome to HeroQuest fans. Happy New Year 2024. It's a little bit of change of pace here today on twitch.tv slash HeroQuest fans. We are not playing HeroQuest today, nor are we playing Space Crusade. We are playing a brand new game I'd like to show you called Sword and Skull from Avalon Hill 2005. And just as a prelude to this video, I do want to just I'm not trying to offend anybody here. I do not endorse piracy, nor do I endorse uh, <laughs> the breaking of copyright. However, I am showcasing uh, some royalty-free videos here, music actually, from a YouTuber called Breaking Copyright. That's his name. Uh, royalty-free music. Right now you're listening to epic pirate music for videos entitled Seven Seas by Alexander Nakarada. Alexander Nakarada, we've showcased his music before, his royalty-free stuff, so thank you. Shout out to them. Check them out on YouTube and also on the web. Definitely support them. Uh, it's really great that they provide that music for uh, people to enjoy. And just as a disclaimer, this game I did receive for free. However, it's not a case of uh, sponsorship or product placement in that sort of way because I didn't receive it from Avalon Hill. It was actually a Christmas gift from a family member. Really grateful to you uh, for that. Um, but I did get it for free, so just so you know. It's a used game. I've never played it before. I read a little bit about it before, and I was going to just show you the game, and if we get some people, we can uh, go ahead and play it. So it is pirate theme. so shout out to Bengus, Bengus on uh, Twitch, and also YouTube and Discord. I think he's on YouTube. Anyway, he's got a lot of pirate-themed things, but he couldn't make it. He's uh, got his own commitments already. So, anyway, that aside, let's. Uh, if you do want to join me live, you can actually play. Nothing is needed to play. Uh, we can roll dice. There actually are d6s in this game, so we can do that through uh, MentorBot in the chat and Discord. If you're watching us on YouTube, sorry, it's just a replay, not live. But if you're watching us live, you can join us in Quest Talk on HeroQuest Fans Discord. Hop in there and you can play. If you just want to lurk, that's fine. Thanks for Bengus for uh, lurking. Definitely check him out. So there it is, Sword and Skull in all its glory. I'd never heard of this game before. Do I still get gold, though? Hey, Matreya! Shout out to Matreya and Theodore Mercantile for the 3D prints, the awesome 3D prints they gifted me. Uh, yes, you, you'll still build up gold by being here. That is true. So lurk lurk away if you like. All right, let me just go to this. Just give me a moment here to get this done. I know I, know I said 2 o'clock. Me being on time, I know. Actually, it's pretty close. Okay, so reshuffle the deck. Yeah, it's a, it's a pirate-themed game, so it has fighting, it has gold. You're going to recognize some, some game mechanics. There's some similarities with uh, certain games like Monopoly. Not a whole lot of similarities to HeroQuest, but there is fighting in it. Combat, I should say. And actually, we can use uh, MentorBot. We can use our D6s still. It's just that... Well, you'll see, but the dice go uh, one through five, and then six is blank, believe it or not. Okay, so first we're going to do a little unboxing. So here is the game box. As you can see, age 10 plus. Board Game Geek said, yeah, eight-year-olds can handle it. It's about 60 minutes, two to five players. I'm thinking you could probably play this solo. It would be pretty easier. Game designed by Mike Elliott. Way anchor for fun and honor. Avalon Hill. There's, so there's the really old Avalon Hill logo. There's also references to Wizards of the Coast on here. So I'm not 100% sure who did what on the game, but apparently Wizards of the Coast. So, I mean, they were all still under the Hasbro umbrella at that time. But was Wizards of the Coast part of um, Hasbro? In 2005. It's AvalonHill.com. Okay, so there's what the back of the box looks like. And I've checked everything. I think we might be missing one gold piece. We've got your game board, 
five plastic pirate figures, five officer figures, 36 crew cards, 16 enemy cards, 33 fortune cards, which are kind of like chance, if you're thinking of it in Monopoly terms. It's a rule sheet, two dice, numbered blank through five, uh, 80 gold tokens, five player cards, and 20 item cards. So here's the plot. Ahoy, mateys! I'm not necessarily going to do the whole voice the whole time. I might need uh, to sip some of my pirate ale to do that. That's more like it. If you're drinking rum, please drink responsibly. Okay. Ahoy, mateys! That scurvy villain, the Pirate King, has stolen the Sea Hammer, the pride of Her Majesty's Royal Navy, and taken to the seas like the dog he is. It's up to ye to commission a brave officer of the Royal Navy to pursue the black-hearted cur, catch him, and turn him into shark bait. But he's a rascal, that Pirate King, so you'll need to recruit one of the dregs of the Queen's dungeons, because sometimes it takes a pirate to catch a pirate. If you discover where that swab be hiding, you'll need to beat the Pirate King in a duel. Require enough gold to buy back the ship. Act with haste, because you're not alone in this hunt, me bucko. Whoever saves the Sea Hammer first wins the Queen's Undying Gratitude and the game. Okay, Matreya says, hey man, just watching the restreams on YouTube, saw the board, made my day. <laughs> oh yeah, we had a blast using your 3D printed board. Um, you guys did a great job on that. And so did Ian at the Dragon's Rest for the original designs. And of course, uh, whoever uploaded those heroes to Cults 3D uh, that you guys then turned into color and added magnets. Okay, so here's the rule book. Book. I mean, as you can see, it's very short. So if you thought HeroQuest was simple, that's it. And then you've got the board here. It's got some cool little detailing on it. Patterns, I should say. It's a... Uh, one of those fold-out quad fold boards. It's smaller than uh, the HeroQuest remake board for sure. Oops. Yeah, I had to kind of every time I play a new game, I have to think about everything being reset. Okay, here we go. It's got actually, I guess, a typical board game finish to it. And as you can see by the colors, kind of reminds you of Monopoly, doesn't it? So you've got these like properties, as it were. There's blue, but believe me, it's it's not a Monopoly uh, uh, copy. It's got a little schmutz on there. Um, yeah, so you've got these four corners. You got down here. You've got uh, pirate ship and navy ship. Oh yeah, let's uh, get this music going here. So we've got this uh, playlist. We're just gonna make sure it's not the same one on a loop. Okay, so this next next track is A Robust Crew by Darren Curtis. And of course you can check him out online as well. Another pirate track. I'm just going to put that in the chat for everyone. Yeah, it's somehow fitting that it's royalty free. So yeah, this is Sword and Skull, 2005 Avalon Hill. So you got the entrance to the cave here that leads on your path. There's the exit up here. But what you want to do is get to the Pirate King and have the final showdown. And as you can see, there's some uh, instructions on what to do. So it, it does have scalable difficulty. And the more players you have, that changes things. So when you're fighting and doing different things. It changes based on how many players there are. You can have up to five. There's no GM in this game, but I'll show you the components. So here are the cards. These are these are the considered the player cards. So you've got purple, yellow, red, blue, and green. And it's um, got a fairly glossy finish to it. There's no like linen or anything on them. Other cards, you've got your fortune cards here. There's quite a few of those. And I was looking at the edge, and you can see it's a little more worn than the others. So these are the ones that are used the most, I think. You've got crew cards. Let's put those down there. 
item cards. Oh yeah, and then enemy cards. So just give you some examples. So uh, not very politically correct nowadays. Let's say the the skilled chieftain, <laughs> shall we say, uh, warrior, and the crocodile. There's like different monsters and then items. So you could have like a steel breastplate or like a leather cloak. Getting a few Hero Quest vibes there, aren't you? Of course, at this time, remember that Avalon Hill had nothing to do with Hero Quest in 2005. Fortune would be like you recruit a mercenary. Keep the peace, you know, different random things like that. And the crew cards examples would be the mercenary camp. Now these symbols here, that sword, that refers to the officer. That's gold. And these pistols refer to the, the pirate. Here I'll show you what I mean by that. When it comes to miniatures, you've got a whole bunch of these miniatures. And yes, they are uh very bendy plastic. So there is your officer. He's got two very small swords. And he's got an interesting little integrated base there. But then he has a partner. So every team, every player has two of these characters. This is the pirate. He's got two pistols. Of course, you can see they're arrayed with other weapons, but he's got this interesting textured base here. So no way to get those two confused. So as you play, they're both going, rolling around. But see, then you've got the red player, yellow, and yes, these colors are brighter than Hero Quest. So you would, if you wanted to mix and match them, you would probably want to paint them if you wanted. Well, let's see. I could compare it to Rise of the Dread Moon. Okay, so there's an idea of the scale. This is, this is Hero Quest over here. Again, comparing Hero Quest. So, that's kind of what that is. Gee, I wonder if this guy would fit with the game. <laughs> the Bard. Okay, and then we've got Blue. So. I know I painted this guy, but it's a different blue. Hearty. Yep. So I'm not sure if it's like, did Wizards of the Coast design the miniatures? Who designed it? I'm not sure. I'd probably have to study a board game geek or whatever. Here are the dice. Nice, good, uh, solid plastic dice. But look at those! Look at those pips. They look like they're just like chewed in there, like it's uh, like it's carved bone or something. So we've got two, one, and they are identical to each other. Three, four, five, and then blank. There's two of these. Pretty standard size. Was as big as the Hero Quest, the Hero Quest remake dice, probably. And I put these in little bags myself, but these are the gold coins. So they're kind of a dull, they're not, you know, chrome shiny or anything. So we've got 10, 5, and 1 are the denominations here. And this is, it's like, um, I don't know what kind of plastic that is, but it's not resin or anything. Never be confused for metal. There you go. And it's not, uh, well, I know that people talked about some of the pla the gold colored plastic made in like the 90s has is was like really brittle and broke. And so a lot of toys are like no longer collectible because they've fallen apart with that type of plastic. It rotted or something. But I don't think you have to worry about that here. <laughs> Where's the orc class? <laughs> Detail looks pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's not, uh, this is not like a strictly a historical game. I mean, there's definitely some fantasy elements mis mixed in with it. Maybe more of like a Pirates of the Caribbean type game. This is what the inside of the box looks like. Look, it comes with this fancy uh, cardboard tray. So you can organize your stuff a little better. And it comes apart pretty easily if you want to. So why don't they have one of these instead of the candy trays? Of course, it probably doesn't hold this. I mean, the stuff bounces around in there, you know. 
But anyway, if I had to choose, I would probably go with red to start with. And like you, I'm learning the game as we as we go. So there's the gold. So I guess there's a banker of sorts. There's no uh, paper notes. It's all coin. So we got one, five, and ten. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start setting up here. And if anybody wants to join me in the game, please join in the quest talk, the Discord link. Okay, we're playing an ad at the moment. Welcome to Bengus, Matreya, but Mr. Bob Marston. All right, we're just getting set up. We can start playing here soon. Here, I'll post the link in the Discord, or from the Discord. I like that music. Yeah, so we've got five slots. Well, four, including myself, plus myself. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me okay. There we go. Okay, you can see I've pinned the message there. So if you want to join us, you can actually join Quest Talk that way. All right, let me get the instructions out again. So this is called Sword and Skull. The goal, each turn, you roll dice and choose one of your figures, your officer or your pirate. So there's the pirate and the officer. To move clockwise around the island. So this is the island, okay? Both gain might and earn wealth for you until one of them is ready to enter the lair of the pirate king. Once there, you can either buy back a stolen Royal Navy ship or take it back by force. If your officer or pirate is the first to recover the stolen ship, you win the game. So down at the bottom here, got the pirate ship and the navy ship. Hey, that sounds like Bob Marston. Welcome, Bob. <laughs> Doing well, thank you. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Yep, yep. Looks like a pretty cool game. I've never played it myself. Have you? Well, I'm, I'm just starting to do that now. So you came at the perfect time. Bob done. Okay, so that'll be a note to anybody who does join us. Be on your best behavior because we have uh, a minor on the stream. All right. Okay, so uh, this is this is what we've got here. So the game board, the dice, numbered one through five, because there's a blank on there. Everybody gets two characters, a pirate on the right and then the officer on the left. So I was going to choose red for myself. Yep. There you are. There you be. bring this game back <laughs> yeah and and add orcs I mean if you want to <laughs> okay uh, so we've got officers in five colors pirates in five colors there's 16 enemy cards 36 crew cards 20 items 33 fortune cards all right so the nefarious pirate king has stolen her majesty's ship the sea hammer the pride of the royal navy furious the queen has offered a great reward to the person who can retrieve it 
one of the advisors to the queen, as one of the advisors to the queen, you have chosen an officer of the Royal Navy to pursue the pirate king. Of course, might take a thief to catch a thief. So you've also conscripted a vicious pirate from the queen's dungeons. Now they're preparing to enter the dreaded lair of the pirate king. Will one of them be the first to recover the sea hammer, or will one of your rivals instead receive the queen's reward? Okay, so set up. Put the game board on the table. Okay, we've already done that. <laughs> Put one gold piece on each of the four treasure chest spaces. Okay, I see them here, here, and here, and here. So we'll get out the one gold. I was already thinking, you know, I should get some shiny gold paint and uh, cover that. We have a comment? Somebody? All right. It's like, listen here. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning this game at the same same time as you all, so. Okay, so we put a treasure piece. And it says on that particular space, when you land on it, take all gold from the space, put one gold from the bank, and each of the other tres treasure chests with less than five gold. Oh, so it kind of keeps building up. Okay, so we did that. Uh, shuffle the enemy deck. I'm not going to show you me shuffling, but trust me, I am shuffling. Then put it face down next to the game board. Do the same with the fortune and item decks. Okay. Let's put enemies here. It's the well shuffled fortune deck. So, Bob, uh, how much time do you have to play? Okay, excellent. Yep. Yep. It's not, uh, cause I need to hire a casino guy to do my shuffling for me. Um, now, you do you have. Well, let's see. You can actually. You actually could roll dice in the Discord, in the mentor bot, if you want. We would just treat a six as, uh, as a blank. Do you want to do that, or do you want me just to roll for you? So you can see the fancy dice. Okay, there's a fancy dice, so that'd be a four and a blank. Okay, so we got the fortune cards. Come over here, and item. Hopefully it won't be as uh, difficult to watch as my first Space Crusade stream, where I was like, uh, I don't know the rules. <laughs> and I did it wrong for like half the game. Uh... If you, if uh, anybody listening to the sound of my voice is uh, an experienced uh, skull, uh, sword and skull player, wants to come and show us how, how it's done, be my guest. Okay, so there's item, and then I think we got to roll or uh, shuffle the crew cards. No, it just says fortune and item. Okay, count the number of players. Remove from the game any crew cards that have a number on the back greater than the number of players. Okay, so for now, we just have two players. So we got the crew deck, so we'll just remove any that... Okay, so remove the three. I like this idea of the scalable game, though. You don't see that in a lot of games. You know, it's like you either have so many players that it's too easy or it's too hard unless you have the exact number that you need. Okay, so we're taking those out. Okay, so we've just got those now. Put the remaining crew cards on the table in separate face-up piles. You'll need one pile for each type of crew card. When you're done, you'll have 10 face-up piles. <laughs> okay, 10 face-up piles. So do they mean with the numbers? Okay. Playing, well, I don't think we need the numbers. If you're playing a four-player game, you would remove each card with a five on its back. Three-player game, five. Which type? Okay, well, I guess we were supposed to look at them then. Each type. So there's Fort Rock. 
rum reef smugglers cove oh i see for each like territory let's say okay so we'll put the green ones there gold red as i knock the gold off okay blue Yeah, if I become like the ultimate board game streamer, I'm going to have to like master all the ways to learn a game live. <laughs> okay, so we've got Clearwater, Rum Reef, Fort Rock, Clearwater, Rum Reef. Okay. But that's not 10 face up piles. each type. Okay, I'm going to have to read a little bit more here. Put the remaining crew cards on the table in separate face-up piles. Need one pile for each type of crew card. When you're done, you'll have ten face-up piles. Each player chooses a color and takes the, the player card. Pirate figure. Oh, okay. So for that, that's that's easy enough. So, Bob, this is your card goes with your characters here yep you and this is mine because it's red probably wait and see me hearties <laughs> if I talk like macho man I might lose my voice okay um, line up all the players pirate figures on the pirate ship space and all the officers figures on the navy ship space decide who will play first oh okay so actually we go down here so this is the real starting location so the pirates will start here officers here <laughs> Man, I'd love to jump in, but I don't think this headache is going to let me. Oh, sorry to hear that, Matreya. I hope you feel better soon. That's never a good thing. He's the guy who made the 3D prints that you may have seen on my previous stream. I don't know if you caught it. Nice. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. Okay, maybe they're saying you're supposed to divide it by type like this, because there's three of those, two of those. Actually, this would make this would make a bit of sense. So maybe they mean divide it up what's by what's on the card. So that would get that would generate new piles. There's just two of those. I guess you need a big table for this game. Maybe bigger than I've got. Well, we'll see. Okay, there we've got there we've got five piles now. Okay, decide who will play first. Well, <laughs> I will uh, will roll each for each of us. So this will be this will be you, Bob. Team Blue. that oh come on <laughs> I can't I can't even name one uh, is Jamaica in the Caribbean <laughs> I got one um, without looking at a map here the Bahamas are the Bahamas in the Caribbean <laughs> okay well, see, now I'm relying on you to tell me. Um, that That's all I got. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't want to embarrass myself. Well, I guess I embarrassed myself by not knowing it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have to apologize to, like, people that live in each one of these, these island nations. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> You're not looking at a map, are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, you've blown me out of the water already. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, the referee comes in, he blows the whistles like unnecessary geography showing off. Ten yard penalty. <laughs> no points. That's a good point. Okay, so future future note to any uh, would be players of this game: learn your Caribbean geography and history. The game won't necessarily teach it to you, but it's nice to know. Impress your friends. Okay, I'm impressed. If you're from the Caribbean, uh, maybe you're not, but <laughs> oh, gee, that that guy. Okay. All right, moving on. So playing the game, play proceeds clockwise, starting with the first player. So. You get to go first. We'll say uh, blue one handily there. And roll the dice and move one of your figures. Encounter the space it lands on. Okay, so what you do when you, when you get to a space, you encounter it. That's your turn. That's your action. So let's talk about movement first. So you roll both dice. Uh, unless you roll doubles or double blanks, choose either your officer or your pirate and move it to a, a number of spaces equal to the total rolled. So you have to roll the total. Figures move clockwise around the board. If you roll a blank and another number, treat the blank as a zero. After you move, you encounter the space your figure lands on. What if you get doubles? So if you got doubles... Uh, except for double blanks, you must move both your pirate and your officer the total rolled. After you move them, you must choose which one encounters a space first. Once you've chosen, resolve that encounter completely, drawing fortune cards and performing actions for that figure if necessary before the other figure encounters its space. So it makes sense so far? All right, now if you get double blanks, okay, what, what happens if you do that? If you roll double blanks, pick up your officer or your pirate, chuck it across the room. No, I'm kidding. That's not part of it. Uh, you pick up either your officer or your pirate and put it on any unoccupied outer space along the edge of the board. Okay. Outer space on the edge of the board. So like out here? I guess. No, he's lined up with a space, so I think that's what it means. Uh... Let's see. It's okay to move off the volca volcano path or lake of fire with double blanks, but you can't move onto the volcano path until the lake of fire or into the lair of the pirate king. Okay, that sounds really dangerous. <laughs> lake of fire, volcano path. What is this? Paths. The paths around the outside of the board are on the outer path. Paths in the middle of the board are the volcano path. Oh, like here? This is the volcano path? Like that? Interesting. Okay. The only entrance to the volcano path is through a cave space that's nestled between the docks and the Fort Rock. Docks and Fort Rock. Okay, I'm looking for Fort Rock. All right, I'm going to move these uh, these cards off the board so I can see what I'm doing here. At this point, I wouldn't recommend drinking any more rum just because you might uh, might fall asleep. <laughs> okay, we'll just put those sideways. Got some new music coming up here. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Fort Rock. Yar! Bohemius be here. Welcome. Okay, we're learning how to play a brand new game. And I'm wishing for a bigger table, so support me on Patreon. <laughs> I don't have one. Just kidding. All right. 
Welcome, Bohemius. Are you going to play with us as well? Okay, so Fort Rock is here. And the docks. Oh, I see. There it is. So this cave. Fight an enemy. If you lose, pay two gold to the treasure trove. But then you can... This is the entrance. Or is this the volcano path? Is this what they're saying? The inner paths and the outer paths. Okay, so that's that's considered the volcano path. All right. Uh, decide whether you want to continue moving clockwise or move on to the volcano path. The volcano path exit is on the opposite side of the board. When exiting the volcano path, continue moving clockwise around the board as usual. So there we've got exit. Lake of Fire. When you enter the Lake of Fire, your movement stops there regardless of what you've rolled. You can only exit the Lake of Fire by moving forward onto the lair of the Pirate King on your next turn. Oh, here's the Lake of Fire right here. Ow! Ow, it's hot. Okay. Um, okay, you can move forward onto the lair of the Pirate King on your next turn, or roll double blanks, or play a local guide card. We don't have one of those yet. If you roll doubles, accept double blanks, move one of your figures onto the, la the lair of the Pirate King. It's this big, huge square here, this boss fight, and move your other figure normally. If both of your figures are on the Lake of Fire when this happens, they both move on to the Lair of the Pirate King. Okay, I think we can kind of table that until we get to it. Ships. You can't move on to the Navy or the Pirate Ship unless you're forced there by the game effect. Hey, Bohemius. I think you're in with us now. Or went away. Okay, well... If he comes back, <laughs> yeah, we, we have room for five players. So far, we have two. I'm playing, and uh, Faraway Man or Bob Marston is, is playing as well. Okay, you can't move on to the ships unless you're forced there. The officer returns to the Navy ship. The pirate returns to the pirate ship. Each ship is considered only one space. It connects to the appropriate dock space. So here's the docks down below. So it's like this. And like this. See, by the time we get Bengus on the stream, uh, we'll have mastered this game. Okay, encountering spaces. So this is very important. When you land on a space, you do an encounter. Most spaces tell you what to do when you land there. When you encounter a space, follow its instructions. Some spaces have additional rules, which are detailed below. So there's a cave, there's a trading post, settlements. So there's, the game has five settlements. Clearwater, we looked at these already. Rum Reef, Mercenary Camp, Smuggler's Cove, and Fort Rock. When your figure lands on a space for a settlement, you encounter that settlement. Encountering the settlement works the same regardless of which space your figure has landed on. When you encounter a settlement, you choose one of the crew cards available. For that settlement, take it for free. So there's our big piles. Then look to see if other players have crew cards for that settlement. So we'll have to show those if a crew card for that settlement has one or more gold symbols you'll need to pay that amount of gold to the player who has that card example your figure lands on clearwater jack has one clearwater car crew card with a gold symbol on it so there we go and sarah has two clearwater crew cards with the gold symbols on them you pay one gold to jack and two gold to sarah Interesting. So it's a little like having properties in Monopoly. Treasure chest. When you land on a treasure chest that doesn't have gold on it, you will restock the other treasure chests. Okay, there's a bridge of tears. There's lava tubes, thieves' den. Okay, I want to see how combat works. I'm sure you do too. So combat occurs when you land on a cave or smoky cave where you would fight an enemy. The Lake of Fire, the Lair of the Pirate King, or a space containing any number of other players' figures, so you can fight each other. Basic rules of combat. When your figure is in combat, you roll a die. There we go. You roll a die and add the might value of your officer or pirate to the total. Your opponent does the same. The highest total wins. If there's a tie, the attacker wins. If you roll a blank in combat, you automatically lose. If you both roll blanks, both players re-roll. 
Might. Each officer and pirate starts with a might of zero. As you play the game, you'll pick up cards that add to the might of your officer or pirate. So we've got the pirate symbol is the pistol. The officer symbol is the sword. Whenever you need to know the might of your pirate or officer, count up all the appropriate symbols on the item, crew, and fortune cards in front of you. Example, you have two clear water crew cards. Each one has an officer symbol. You also have a cutlass item card with two officer symbols. Your officer's might is four. So one, two, three, four, plus zero. So if people need reminders, I'll need reminders too. That's what we look at. Enemies. To determine the might of an enemy, count up the number of crew cards you have. Then look at the chart on the enemy card. Remember I was talking about scalable difficulty? The chart also lists your reward for winning against that enemy. The player to your left rolls for the enemy. Well, I can roll for everybody. Your win, you win ties. So if you are fighting the Emperor Cobra, for example, if the Emperor Cobra wins against you, pay an additional two goal to the treasure trove. So if you have crew cards of zero to five, the monster is a might of three. And your reward is two gold plus one item. If you have six to seven crew, it is a might of five and you get three gold plus one item. If you have eight or more, then the Emperor Cobra has a might of seven and your reward would be four gold and one item. Other players' figures. After your figure encounters a space, it fights any other officers and pirates on the space that belong to other players. If there are other multiple figures on the space, you choose the order your figure fights them. The fight uses the basic rules of combat with two additional rules, benefits of winning. If your figure wins in a combat against other players' figure, you can take two gold from that player. If your player has more crew cards than you do, you can instead choose one of his or her crew cards and take it. If you choose to take two gold from someone who has less than two gold, that player goes bankrupt. That's how you can lose, is by going bankrupt. Keep the peace, lucky blow, and quick thinking. Three fortune cards can affect combat if either player has them. Keep the peace can be played before you roll for combat. The other two can be played after you roll. All right, I think we'll, we'll just kind of cover that as we go. But bankruptcy. You go bankrupt if you owe more gold to another player of the bank or the treasure trove than you can pay. When you go bankrupt, you must sell item cards to the bank until you have enough gold to pay what you owe. If you sell all your items and still can't pay the full amount, the bank covers the rest of your expenses, but your figure is sent back to its ship. Items that you sell are discarded. You can't go bankrupt to buy items or to pay the Pirate King. You must have enough gold on hand for your purchases. Excellent. Wasn't me, I'm waking up. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Bohemius. Okay, 